the power of letting them wonder about you during your breakup, during no contact, not, let's talk about it. One of the most important things that you can do is to let your ex think and wonder about what they're missing out on by you doing no contact and you focusing on the space and the distance and letting go. But I'll tell you why it works and the psychology behind it. So obviously you're blindsided. You've been dumped out of nowhere and it hurts and you're in the most emotional state that you could possibly be in. I have a couple of notes here, by the way. So if you see me peeking down, that's what I'm doing. And because of this emotional state, the first thing and the only thing you really want to do is convince them and basically you're kind of projecting energy like you're trying to get them to think about all the memories and all the places and all the times you were together etc cetera, etc cetera, right and you're you're basically trying to force them to think about the relationship because you believe that they are in the same emotional state that you are in and it's not true and I'll tell you why the emotional state they are in is one of neutrality, like letting go. Basically, they've already thought, okay, I've already distanced myself mentally and emotionally from this relationship and from this person. And I'm actually going to go do my own thing. They thought about this weeks before they broke up with you. Okay. They thought about that, maybe even months. It depends on how, how, you know, good or bad your relationship was. So because they've been thinking this for so long, They've also been confused, right? And that's probably why you noticed that distance. And you being blindsided, you're getting hit with it all at once. So your natural action is to remind them of what they're missing out on, which is the relationship, but they've already processed that. They've already thought about that. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do to force them to think about you and how good the relationship was and what they're gonna miss out on except to distance yourself properly. And because everyone chases and pers- like over 90% of people chase and pursue, they can't, they can't let go. That is where people get really screwed up and end up screwing up the reattraction process. And this is simply just one of those things where the harder that you try and the harder that you, the more that you pursue them and the more that you try to chase them and try to lock them down and try to remind them of how important you are to them, the harder and faster they're going to run and create distance from you. And then ultimately what ends up happening is respect also goes down the toilet and people need to feel like they are with an equal when they're dating you. And then when they lose attraction to you, right, and they see how weak you're acting, again, attraction, respect, all these things go down the toilet even more. That's why, again, when you chase and pursue, you're just digging yourself into a massive hole. So if you've done that already, stop, okay? Stop immediately. Now, some of my long-term clients and students, they they get into this mindset of of kind of like, okay, if I do no contact, it's going to like A plus B equals C, that kind of thing. If I so if I do 90 days of no contact, she'll come back or he'll come back, right? And it's not even true, right? A lot of them just get attached to the idea and it's actually fake no contact that way. Let me talk about that for a sec. So fake no contact is when you do no contact because a coach like me or somebody told you to and they told you that there would be some sort of outcome and you got attached to that that thing. And like I said earlier, it is the best thing that you can do, but you're doing it from the wrong angle and the wrong emotional state where you're saying, I'm going to do no contact for a, you and you'll put your own limitation or or how long you're willing to do it for in your head and you'll go okay I'm going to I'm going to do no contact for x amount of time right and in that headspace and emotional state for you you're like okay I'm going to do it for this many days and they'll come back I'm going to do it for them you're still doing it for them and you're still doing it to try to get the relationship back when in fact the the, the when you actually let go and you focus on, like it's that age old, like focus on you. It sounds so cliche, focus on you, focus on your own energy, focus on yourself. When you do that, it's absolutely true that because that it works really well. And it's because you end up going back and looking at your life and you 
almost put it under a microscope and you can see where things are wrong and you can really pick things apart and, and understand when and how everything fell apart. And the more you ruminate on it, the more that you think about it and the more that you try to connect the dots, the faster that you're going to have these aha and realization moments. Like, for example, most of the people that come to me and they do long-term coaching and long-term uh, stuff with me, most of them don't have any kind of purpose. Most of them don't have any kind of thing they're trying to do. So what they end up doing is they make the relationship their purpose instead of a passion or a project or anything like that. And doing so, actually, you, what you do is you put the relationship on a pedestal because you are trying so hard to always keep it together. So what people do is they don't set boundaries, for example, or they they over communicate, they over pursue, they don't actually let the other person breathe, these kinds of things, and they become needy. And the more independent and self-loving you are to yourself, the more that you're into that and the more that you do that, the more that you realize you don't need other people. You don't need a relationship to be happy. It's something you're choosing to do. And I remember hearing this from a mentor of mine because what people do is they end up putting, again, their, 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 their partner on a pedestal, but they ultimately forget about themselves. They forget that they need to continue to grow. This is how people grow apart. So the solution I want to give you guys is obviously to initiate and start no contact, but don't be into like, don't, don't think that like fake no contact is going to work. What's going to work is you focusing on what you need for your current life right now while they're gone. Because I will leave you with this. If they were to contact you and come back tomorrow, if they said, hey, Jack, you know, how you been? And you're like, I'm good. <laughs> you're, you're, you're obviously like your heart's in, like your stomach's in the shitter, right? And you're freaking out. And if you did that, would you be different? Would you be better? Would you make better decisions? Would you communicate better? Would you focus on yourself more while in the relationship and love yourself and give the other person something to respect, something to love, something to, you know, uh, something to respect, again, respect. And what a lot of, what a lot of people do is they end up just, again, they, they put themselves down here and their ex up here, like their relationships up to I. So remember to do that work. That work is extremely important because that's why they fell in love with you. They fell in love with you because they had an idea of what you were going to turn out to be the potential and if you didn't turn out to be that person, right? Are you the same per like are are you living up to the expectations that they had? And maybe they're unrealistic, sure. Right? But again, like I said, the amount of people that I coach long term, they all come to me and they're like like, yeah, I really put the relationship like just just at the forefront for so long that I forgot about myself. I forgot about my own hobbies. I I, I let go of my friends and I and I let go of what was important. I didn't see, I don't even see my grandmother in this minute. You know what I mean? It's important stuff. So guys, remember that's what really makes an ex come back around. And it's that wonder, that excitement, that, uh, what have, what have they been up to and watching all their social media and, and doing all that doesn't help you, you know, try to be mysterious, try to be a And this, again, when you refocus and put all your energy into yourself, you're naturally going to appear very attractive when you have a, a day full of stuff, I call it 100 units of time, right? When you fill up, like you track everything throughout your day from morning to night, uh, before you go to bed, you track everything and see where all your time is going. And anyway, see you guys in the next video. Everything's in the description box if you look for coaching.